When I first heard the term pipe coding, I imagined coding in a cozy cafe with chill music. But it turns out it's something else entirely. In this short video, I will show you what vibe coding is, how to get started, how much it costs, and the skills you need in 2025 to stay relevant in IT. So what exactly is vibe coding? It is a new coding approach where you're letting AI completely write the code, practically forgetting the code even exists. Vibe coding lets you build apps by simply describing them in plain English. No need to worry about programming languages like JavaScript or Python. In a way, it looks like English is becoming the programming language of the future. And you might already be doing this without realizing it. If you ever copied code from ChatGPT, pasted it into your code editor, and then sent errors back to ChatGPT to fix, congratulations, you've already done some primitive vibe coding. But trust me, you'll be blown away by what else is possible. But before we vibe too hard and deploy to prod by accident, let's take a step back. Vibe coding isn't a new tool, it's more of a way of writing code and building applications. This term has been coined by Andre Carpati, who describes vibe coding as the approach where you fully give into the vibes, embrace exponentials, and forget that the code even exists. Poetic, right? Now let's see it in action. On the front lines of this movement are tools like Purser and Windsurf. Let me briefly walk you through a simple project. So this is Cursor, which is based on VS Code. To create a new project, you just chat with Cursor, which behind the scenes is using an LLM, and it will immediately get to work. I'm going to ask it to recreate my childhood game, a space shooter from the 90s. And here's the cool part. Because it is an agent, it does a lot of actions on its own, like creating files, executing commands, installing dependencies, deploying, and so on. In less than a few minutes, you can have your first working iteration. Yes, I know, it doesn't look great, but I still think it's kind of amazing. Now let's be real, this works even better if you refine your prompt and create a more detailed product description, ideally outside of the IDE, but you get the idea. It's like telling a builder, build me a house. You still need to specify the size, style, and materials. The clearer your instructions, the better the result. That said, don't expect magic from just one prompt. Rome wasn't built in a day. Like any project, start with a software spec, break it down into smaller tasks, build step by step, one feature at a time. This is how software development works anyway. But here's a common question. Is the code created through Vibe coding any good? The answer is, eh, it depends. The code quality varies, and this is mostly because LLMs are trained on public data. It's great for proof of concepts, demos, learning, or quick experiments, but I don't think it's ready for shipping critical production code. Now, startups and entrepreneurs can definitely benefit from this, but it requires more guidance and someone behind the wheels who knows a thing or two about software. Think of these AI agents like genius bookworms. Brilliant with theory, but totally inexperienced in the real world unless guided. Basically, it's like one junior dev who read the whole clean code book, but still can center div. So what skills do we actually need now? Or is AI replacing us? The skills needed are definitely shifting. The most important skills now are being able to understand, debug, and why not guide the AI? You're not coding anymore, you're solving AI murder mysteries. And for that you need expert knowledge. Imagine all the job postings looking for people who can debug code written by AI. Now let's talk limitations for a second. Vibe coding, at least for now, struggles with enterprise-level projects and large code base. In enterprise settings, code is just one small piece of the puzzle. Excluding all the stand-ups and that quick sync that eats your afternoon, most work goes into maintaining, securing, and improving systems, things AI isn't yet great at. But here's why I'm excited. Vibe coding helps people build stuff. And I hope that at least some people will ditch the idea of not 
caring about the code and work to understand what's going on behind the scenes. Because eventually, someone will ask, why is this broken? And the vibes were off isn't a valid Jira comment. You can get started with tools like Cursor and Windsurf and build something in no time. But if you'd like a little help, I've created a course that shows best practices and guides you through the process. This course is for anyone curious about how AI is changing software development. Whether you're a complete beginner or an experienced dev, I will show you how AI can help you build faster and what you still need to know to do it right. And just remember, Vibe coding isn't a silver bullet. It still takes time, practice and patience. But with the right mindset and the help of AI, you can go from idea to working prototype and potentially a product in record time. Before we wrap up, let's talk cost for a second. Cursor and Windsurf both have free plans, but you will get most out of them with a paid subscription. That said, there are also low-cost and free alternatives like RuCode or Klein. In the end, whether you love it or hate it, Vibe Coding is here to stay and it is evolving fast. If it becomes too easy and everyone can do it, it's no longer a valuable skill. As an IT professional, you should always strive to grow. Take on complex tasks that scare other people. Learn what the AI can do and get better at what it can. Thanks for watching and let me know what you think in the comments below.